Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be talking about, in this video, um, a response to one of my older videos about AI and how AI developers are not as wise as they should be. Um, an individual, I have about 12,000 followers on, on LinkedIn, and an individual commented on, on this video I posted. Um, it's a video that I created after a, a AI conference when I started noticing a lot of these developers not really understanding the social implications of implementing these types of technologies into the society, especially if it's going to disrupt the labor force. Um, you know, the idea is that this is just like an, an industrial revolution, and it's not. It's it's uh, a machine that can create machines and that feedback is much more different than most people realize. I do believe that artificial intelligence does have a place in society. I do believe that many good things can come about through artificial intelligence and that there can be a symbiotic relationship between um, modern society and artificial intelligence. The problem comes in is, is when we start thinking about transhumanism, the merging of man and machine, which I'm against, um, the idea of supplanting uh, massive amounts of labor towards automation, uh, what do these individuals do? There are researchers at Berkeley that think that, well, well you know, what's going to happen is this is going to be this kind of like equalization of incomes and that. Um, people will get a minimum, you know, some sort of minimum stipend from the government. And this is, sounds a lot like Marxism. It sounds a lot like, um, you know, communism and, and this idea of a uh, low productive um, society. You know, what does it mean to be human is really the big question. So this individual that was posting that I'm an idiot because, um, <laughs> You know, I think that AI could be a negative externality. Um, doesn't fully realize he's a d data scientist, so you know he's using machine machine learning algorithms to discern patterns in data, which is not artificial intelligence. That is just mathematics crunching big sets of data. Um, artificial intelligence, uh, in its in its purest sense is what I'm talking about with open cog, with cortical computing, with subcortical computing, such as Nomenta, such as what Dr. Gertzel is doing with open cog, and what I'm doing in, in my uh, research with my company, the studio Dash Reykjavik. So, you know, it's important to understand that there's the high potentiality of the demon escaping, as Elon Musk says, or proposes. But he also proposes that man and machine should merge. Um, and I'm not really for that. I think that that would uh, basically diminish what it means to be human. I think um, as I do my, my research, and I've published some stuff on this, that it's important to be human and to maintain human connection. And there is a serendipitous aspect to being human, learning through trial and error, learning through by making mistakes. Um, you know, the beauty of aging, um, the, 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 uh, the, um, the evolutionary concept of actually having some level of for forgetfulness. Um, you don't want it to be completely a just a gigantic database. Sometimes when you forget something, um, it allows room for something else to emerge because you're not stuck in, 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 in kind of a, a box of a type of thinking that, that you had previously to obtain that previous knowledge. So I think that there's a lot of philosophical exploration on what it means to be human um, and the effects 
of artificial intelligence on human societies and the negative externalities of bringing those two technologies together. What I'm noticing, which is dangerous, is that people that are in AI and the ones that are doing these startups to try to get the funds are doing anything that anything and everything that they can to market a certain um, strategy. You know, a lot of the AIs out there are really junk. A lot of it's machine learning. You know, it's not cortical computing or, or subcortical computing or atom space kind of technologies. Um, it's, you know, more just um, artificial neural networking uh, on steroids. Now, or, or other methods, you know, to discern patterns in, in data. There's nothing wrong with that, and there's some uses in it, especially in, bi in, in, in medicine, because part of my studies at Fordham is to kind of understand the human body and how to kind of use similar patterns or similar ways uh, analogs to to develop a better AI. Um, people that have been following my research realize that my research is more on the, on, on like a cellular level, not using machine learning. It's it's neurons turning on and off and learning patterns through trial and error, which is the hierarchical temporal memory method that. Numenta uses, except I put emotion in the AI. There, there's a there's a series of emotional algorithms that that help with the learning process. Part of that is because of my research in finance and the the psychological behavior of traders, the psychological behavior of markets, and, and, and social constructs. So that makes sense to me. It seems like that's a synergy there. But the problem that I'm seeing with a lot of the startups is they, they're marketing something that's really not AI. And re real researchers um, would just say, this is just, you know, this is technology that's been written in the 1970s, <laughs> except that now you have the computer powers to do it. Uh, so this is nothing new. Um, but there are some researchers out there there are some companies out there that are where I would call it's real AI. Um, not artificial general intelligence, AGI, but it is AI, um, either assisted or unassisted or a hybrid. Now, so if you're an investor investing in AI, you have to be careful, well, one, that is it real AI? Or is it just a marketing ploy? Or is it really just souped up machine learning? That's one. Um, from what I see with Uber and with Facebook, their AIs are souped up machine learning. They're not using cortical computing. Um, now, A lot of these AIs is trying to understand patterns and societies to be able to market, you know. And again, where is the, other than fast paced target marketing, where is the social, I don't understand the social benefit, the, the positive social change of such a company. It just seems to be a space that's very crowded and maybe people shouldn't be buying so much. Um, people are already kind of d disconnecting from being bombarded by so many emails and so many advertisements. People are unplugging from t television and YouTube and you know social media. People want a people want a meaningful life, not a hermit life, but a meaningful life. And I'm not so sure that some of these artificial intelligence or machine learning companies that are trying to market to the masses or to companies that are plugged into the masses uh, 
really are benefiting the average citizen. Uh, it's not, it does, I, it, perhaps this technology is great at a research level, uh, being able to discern patterns in, let's say, genomic um, abnormalities to understand diseases or uh, understand uh, systemic risks in social systems and, and how to circumvent that. Or as my, as I've, you know, come up with some concepts, some concept uh, videos on using artificial intelligence to actually be an automatic stabilizer for the monetary supply instead of, of a central bank where you can actually have the Treasury Department controlling the currency without going into the bond market and having a syndicate of different banks um, buying those bonds and and then um, you know the society being an indebted um, through those bond issuances while well, we could have easily just changed the money supply by the, from the Treasury Department and this is very doable when it comes to digital a digital currency I call it the digital dollar. I'm not saying that we should go Bitcoin, but I do think that the the dollar um, could be the base and that it could be all electronic. The problem, um, some of the problems could be with this type of technology is, and a lot of this research, the base of this research is coming from Dr. Werner in his studies of Japan and uh, the BOJ and the MOF and their relationship and how they didn't control the money supply for productive GDP. Instead, it went into speculation. And we see this today with, with um, central banks intervening in markets, changing the money supply, and it's going into speculation instead of productive GDP. If you're a business owner, you'd understand this in the sense that it's harder to get a business loan than it is to go get a loan to buy a home, especially an already built home that doesn't add to GDP. So um, one of the problems with digital currency using artificial intelligence is that it could be uh, either um, a war could break out and systems go down, electronic systems go down, an EMP, um, like a new, you know, a nuclear detonation, and it destroys and electronic systems. You no longer have access to exchange of money, exchange of value. So you'd have to go back to an older way. So that's one problem. Uh, the other problem is is that it is very possible to have an EMP that is a natural event, either through the sun, um, plasma being extruded out and it fries telecommunication systems and, and, and power grids. This is very possible. You gotta think that think about that, you know, our electrical system is very young relative to the cycle of the earth and the cycle of the sun. And we have not seen the true nature of of electrons being extruded out, plasma being extruded out of the sun and how it affects the atmosphere of the earth, especially over durations of 500,000 years or, or even millions of years, because of our electrical system is only about 100 years old, or maybe a little bit more than that. So that's a very small time scale compared to the massive cycles of the sun. So we could be building up this very fragile society um, all electronic, all AI, all automated, and it could come crashing down in a very, um, you know, black swan event from the sun, and you can't stop it. So, so what I mean by AI developers not having wisdom is that they don't understand that there are endogenous risks that they're building up in into the system by building up these types of uh, uh, devices, these types of companies, and having the society more integrated, and not understanding there's this existential threat in nature that could that could come about, or an existential threat through just conflict with the human race that could 
and most probable put us into a new type of dark age. Maybe not the type of dark age that was in the, you know, the 12th century, but it could put us into a dark age that's something similar to maybe the 1700s. So um, even though the Enlightenment was going through the 1700s and, you know, but my point here is, is that if you've been through a hurricane or if you've been through a major natural disaster and you're without pow power or water or food for w weeks, uh, you snap into the 17th century very quickly, from the 21st century to the 17th century very, very quickly. So this is my point, that artificial intelligence developers do not understand the endogenous and exogenous risks of the systems that they're developing. So when I get, when I get um, uh, comments that I'm an idiot, that I don't know what I'm talking about, that uh, that that you know that uh, AI researchers are um, you know no better. That's a dangerous situation when you when you have these researchers reaching to social media and almost projecting godlike personalities that they have a god complex that they know better. Um, this is one of the first signs that technology is spinning out of control and moving in a direction that that may not be of a positive social change that I'm trying to promote. So that's my take on why I think that artificial intelligence developers um, are not wise and do not have wisdom and that they don't understand the exogenous and, and endogenous risk factors that are building up in our society. So if you have any comments, please uh, let me know. Um, I do think that there is a movement that is starting where it's not about transhumanism, it's about humanism. It's not about being overly saturated with advertisements and, and material goods, but a more quality life, um, a more healthy life, um, a life that is fulfilling. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to live like a Quaker. Uh, you can live in modern day uh, technology, but uh, there needs to be um, a balance, and I think that we ha are spinning into a, a disequilibrium that is not healthy for individuals nor societies in general. So thank you for listening and have a nice day.